I'm Ian Cooper, Integrations Architect at Tetra Science. Today I'm going to talk to you about how we can get Tetra data into Benchling Notebook as assay results. Let's look at a high-level overview of the process. We start with the instrument data ingested into the platform as raw data. This data is parsed and harmonized into Tetra data through a raw to IDS pipeline. Tetra data is our engineered, vendor agnostic JSON representation of the instrument data. Finally, the Tetra data is transformed into a set of Benchling results and sent to Benchling Notebook through its web API using our IDS to Benchling protocol. Let's zoom in on this IDS to Benchling protocol. Our IDS to Benchling protocol is comprised of two steps. The first step is data transformation from the Tetra data to the API payload format used by Benchling. This is done using the DataWeave transformation engine and has an associated script with the details about how the data is to be transformed. The second step is to push the transformed data to Benchling using their standard REST API endpoints. Now I'm going to show you what goes into writing this DataWeave script. In this example, we're going to be using some ACTA data from a protein purification run using the Cytiva Unicorn software. First, we'll open up our DataWeave script and our Benchling assay run schema definition. We're populating all four fields in the schema with the Benchling project ID and schema ID hard-coded based on this particular use case. As we jump over to our Tetra data, you can see that we extract the result name, the system name, and the run timestamp from the Tetra data. I've also added a link to the file in the Tetra data platform for easy access. Now let's look at the assay results. You'll see a similar structure here. Our result schema contains peak-specific information, so we want run result per peak. We extract the peaks list from the Tetra data and map each relevant peak property to the corresponding Benchling assay result schema field. We got peak number, peak retention volume, peak area, peak volume, and conductivity. And then finally, at the bottom, we have a link back to the assay run we created earlier. Here, we reference it by name. This gets translated into the proper Benchling ID once the assay run is uploaded. Now let's take a look at what the user sees. I've created a new notebook entry here with an appropriate assay run. The file that we processed with that pipeline will go into the Benchling inbox, where it's available for scientists to add into their notebook entry. Here we can see the run in the inbox that was just added by the pipeline. Once I insert it, it's moved from the inbox to my notebook entry. Now the run information and the peaks from that Tetra data are available right in my notebook entry, along with a link back to the Tetra data platform for easy access to any raw or Tetra data files. For more information about Tetra data integration with Benchling Notebook, go to this link or use the QR code. And then the question is, what will you come up with next? <laughs>